thank you for the introduction. So the motivation behind my work comes from uh, the aim of improving conventional system for deep hyperthermia, and it has some common points with uh, the present two presentations before me. So in a quick observation, we can see that uh, con almost all conventional systems have fixed number of elements and the uh, fixed position of uh, antenna radiators. So even though they have a uh, treatment planning for a specific patient, the applicator itself is not patient specific. Typically, the optimization and the focusing of the power into the target is done by optim optimizing the amplitudes and the phases of, the, uh, of uh, every antenna excitation signal. And uh, at the end, some elements may result with a uh, low power or even negligible one. So we can say that uh, the array is not optimal for a specific patient case because not all of the elements are contributing every time. However, if we move into a modular array system, we have an additional degree of freedom. We, can, we have flexible number of elements and uh, flexible positioning of elements for every patient. So we can adapt it for a patient to, to be patient specific. We expect in, uh, an improvement in the number of elements. So uh, for a modular array, we can select only the elements which have a high contribution and eliminate the ones with expected low contribution in hitting the target. Also, a more flexible positioning uh, would make us expect to have an improved focusing in the target while reducing the heating in the healthy tissue. And uh, in overall, we want we aim towards a system which improves the treatment outcome. So how do we do it? The procedure is as follows. Uh, we want to decouple the optimization of uh, the amplitudes and the phase and the positioning of the elements because additional degree of freedom means that uh, if we do the optimization altogether, we have a more complex optimization. So initially, we import the patient-specific segmented model into an EM simulation tool. After deline delineating the target tumor, we place a short dipole uh, RF source into the target. Then we perform an EM simulation. Finally, we evaluate the tangential component of the electromagnetic field in the skin. And at the end, we obtain uh, an intensity distribution of E-field component <coughs> along the head-to-foot direction uh, in the skin, such as the one illustrated here. The higher intensity in the skin means that uh, the lower attenuation towards from target to the skin. We can say that the inverse is true as well, and uh, placing elements in the high intensity area, as shown here, would result in a higher contribution in hitting the target. So if we repeat this procedure for different frequencies, we found out that uh, different number of elements can be placed in an optimal region. and uh, the, the, the area itself changes for different frequencies. So this can be adapted for a certain patient or a certain target. And the uh, heavy modular array has an advantage, additional advantage such that uh, we can avoid placing uh, elements in front of sen heat sensitive tissues such as the spine. Uh, we want to do a comparison between uh, full array and the optimized array. So we selected uh, bladder tumor in a, an anatomical model of Duke. So in the first case, shown in the first picture, we have a full row with ten bow tie antennas with individual water boluses. And in the second one, we identify the area with, uh, optimal for optimal placement, and uh, the total number of elements is reduced to six. We use a frequency of 200 megahertz for our simulation, and uh, for the EM results, we normalize it to one watt total input power for the full applicator. So in the first view, uh, we observed that uh, there is, so we have the target here, and uh, we observed that there is a higher power deposition in the sides for the full row applicator compared to the uh, optimized one, whereas the total SAR di uh, distribution in the target is not very different. However, if we want to look closer, we take an SAR profile across different cuts in the tumor. And uh, we observe that for the optimized applicator, we have a higher SAR in the target for the same total input power. So it's better focusing. Another important point is that we observe that the optimal optimized applicator actually is hitting more in the skin 
which is an undesired condition, but uh, as we know, the cooling of the water bolus can help to mitigate this uh, problem. So next step was to perform a thermal simulation, a one hour long thermal simulation for both cases. The power we applied to different applicators was different and we normalized it such that we have the same uh, SAR at the center of the tumor. So for the uniform applicator, it ends up to have 87 watt uh, total power compared to the 74 watt for the optimized one. For the temperature simulations, we used the temperature dependent perfusion model for fat, muscle and tumor tissue. Uh, if we want uh, to have more insight in the temperature distribution, cumulative temperature histograms are useful. So the line in the right represents the, the temperature histogram for the tumor tissue and the, the one in the, le the left is uh, related to the healthy tissue. So a good treatment would mean that the tumor tissue is as deep as possible and uh, as high a temperature as possible towards closer to the 44 44 to 45 degrees. So if we want to have a comparison between both, it's better to superpose them from the highlighted areas in the right and in the left, the ones in the blue, we can see that there is a better heating of the tumor and at the same time, a lower heating of the healthy tissue. However, in this region, we observe that for a small region, the uniform full array ha has lower heating in the healthy tissue and uh, this corresponds actually to the superficial higher heating that we showed before in the SAR profile. But uh, compared to the other ones, this is relatively low. Uh, so for the previous simulations, we uh, applied the uniform power in the all elements, but uh, we optimized the phase such that we want to achieve the focusing. Next, if we want to optimize the amplitude as well, we observe that there are four ele elements for the uniform applicator which have a low contribution and they correspond to the elements which are omitted in the optimized uh, applicator case. So even amplitude optimization shows that these elements actually have a low contribution. To conclude, I would like to say that uh, we try to exploit the flexibility of a modular array in order by changing the number and the position of the elements. And uh, the inverse source method was, uh, is a uh, uh, a good way to decouple the optimization and uh, to, to adapt the array to be patient specific and target tumor specific in a shorter amount of, of time and in an easier way. The end result would be to achieve a better focus to reduce the heating and healthy tissue. And uh, since we have fewer elements, inherently the treatment planning becomes less complex. Uh, it's important to mention as well that uh, if we want to apply this in a clinical condition, uh, relatively practical uh, positioning system should be implemented for the user. Also, when we determine the, the, the best area to fit the elements, we don't consider the water bolus impact uh, because uh, at that point you don't really know which, uh, what kind of shape of applicator uh, are you going to apply. So that's all from me and uh, if you have any questions. Thank you very much for a nice talk. Are there any questions from the audience? Thank you. Very, very nice talk. I have two small curiosity. The first one is that you're only considering the tangential component on the skin. Yes. So what is your idea uh, since the polarization is happening? So could we exploit or could we have better results if we consider, uh, let's say, a not a, a Z polarization of the field, another one? or uh, this is already like a good approximation of the optimal? So for my simulations, I've considered both eye antennas or slot antennas, and uh, the, the highest component is the, the one which is tangential to the, to the skin. So if you change the design of the antenna or if you want to combine a different component, uh, then you should consider maybe the other direction. But in general, since the body has a cylindrical coordinate symmetry, we can say, then uh, you can coherently combine the one component, which is along the head-to-foot direction for maximum uh, uh, power deposition. So that one is the most uh, significant one. 
that's why I'm okay. optimizing only that. So, so you, you look at the other two and the Z yes, one yes. was the, the, the yeah. okay, so thank you. And the second one is, <coughs> uh, is it possible that there is uh, one direction or one position of one antenna uh, where you actually don't get uh, a high uh, dominant, co a high uh, component, like high value of the intensity on the skin because of losses. T since this is, uh, this reminds me of a time reversal. But yes. this position actually, uh, by using more power, you can use like a field interplay to reduce hotspot or so on. Like, uh, what is your uh, experience in that? So for the time reversal, actually, it's the same method, but you make use of the phase. So we are looking at that animation here. And uh, we try to find the lowest path from the tumor to the skin. So uh, when you do this, you at least you know that this attenuation information is uh, expected to be correct if we change them. I don't know if, if it was clear. Okay. okay. Thanks. Uh, thank you for this presentation, and it's nice to see we, uh, there is other people working on these topics, and we are. On, it's nice feeling that we have uh, we're on the right track. And uh, I was wondering this kind of uh <coughs> modular applicator. Yes. Uh, physically, how how is it? Is it something you have already implemented, uh, realized, or is it a prototype, or is it uh, an idea, or and how would that work? Would you do this before? for every patient. Um. So uh, closed design, uh, not exactly the same, but similar principle for this was implemented for uh, applicators of su for superficial tumors in animals. And uh, it was published before. In that case, they used two, three applicators. And uh, for positioning, they use a 3D printed mask. So similar principle can be used for this case as well. And it should be adapted for the patient conformity as well. Are there any, any more questions? Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, is a frequency fixed in your uh, modeling or is it also a parameter which is variable? So I think the frequency is also very important for the final result. Uh, yes. So that's why in the third slide, if I'm not wrong, we show results for three different frequencies. Okay. So depending on what kind of applicator you are using, the position you can determine for different frequencies and see the area, does it change too much or not, which corresponds to the attenuation as well. So you can consider that one as well. And what frequencies uh, have you tested? So for, the, for this case, yeah. uh, I showed the simulation of uh, 200 megahertz frequency but we are considering in the range between 200 to 350. Okay. I have one uh, question, uh, yes. a quick one. Do you consider the antenna type, you, or you just consider a electric field to be, pro so, so that you have a main component of your electric field, but you do not consider the specific antenna yeah. Uh, so antenna type and bolus shape, as I mentioned in the last point, it's important. But uh, that, that is an additional, uh, additional information or additional block that you should add. But it doesn't change the fact that there is a higher attenuation in the body for a specific area. Yeah, yeah so, so you so made the first step and now So the first step is that uh, you identify the regions where placing elements actually is not very useful. Then you try to optimize the amplitude and phase of the elements around it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks.